Hey everyone, it's Shammai. Just wanted to share some thoughts that I've been having on our journey right now as we're traversing through the Torah readings in the beginning of this week's Torah portion. So there's a very interesting exchange between Avram Avinu and the children of Chait. And the the way that Avram introduces himself is uh, it's very striking. He introduces himself to these people as Ger v'toshav anuchi imachem. I am a wandering sojourner with you. I am a I'm a foreigner. I'm a foreigner who's just wandering around in this land. And you think about it, that's a that that is quite accurate. How Avram Avinu lived his life. You know, he he you know he comes to the land of Canaan. He sets up his tent in Beit El, and then he goes down to Beersheva, goes back to Hebron. Then he finds himself in Elon Mamre. He's all over the place. He's not an established person. He's really living, you know, as a as a wandering gear, as a wandering foreigner. You know, we know that uh, that Avram was was given ten trials and tribulations. Asara nisyonos shenisnasa b'hem Avram Avinu. The 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 ten tests that Avram Avinu was given v'amad b'chulam, and he prevailed in all of them. And the first test that Avram is given is the test of Lech Lecha, to leave his home in Mesopotamia and to you know to go to the land of Canaan. And the Rambam in his commentary on the Mishnah points out that this was not just a test of moving from point A to point B. That's you know that's obviously difficult, and you know it's it's hard for someone to leave their family and to go to a culture that they're not familiar with, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But that's not a test that would characterize the greatness of Avram Avinu per se. Rather, what Avram was being asked of by God is to not only leave his place. Where he where he's from, and to go to a different place, but to live the life of 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 someone who's wandering, to live the life of a ger, to live the life of a foreigner, of a wandering foreigner, and indeed this is what this is how Avram Avinu lived throughout his throughout his life, and <clears throat> I find it really interesting to point out that even though today our circumstances have tra- changed drastically and we're not wandering around from place to place and. Thank God the Jewish people are established in their homeland and we're set up here. But the theme of being the ger, of embodying the consciousness of the wandering foreigner, still has a place in 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 our in our in our spiritual practice and our spiritual growth. Way way later in the Torah, when when God is delineating the laws of Shemitah and Yovel, which basically are a series of instructions about how we have to treat the land in the land of Israel like the actual earth, the actual ground. We have to stop working it every couple of years, and at a certain point, even land that we bought has to be returned to its original owner. And the rationale behind this, as the Pasuk says, Ki li kol haaretz, God declares, the whole land belongs to me. Right? Your, 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 your attachment to the land is really temporal. You, you, you don't have a permanent, a permanent ownership over this. Ki gerim betoshavim, because you are with me, wander f- f- foreigners. You're you're wandering gerim. That's what you are with me. And again, even though, on the external level and in the day to day reality, we are established and we're firm and we are, you know, set up in our in our in our material circumstances. So God reminds us once in a while that essentially this is a temporal state of being and. As you relate to me, as as you all relate to God, you have to maintain that consciousness of the gear of the foreigner. And what is that? What are these lessons that we're supposed to extract from that? So, you know, what what comes to mind is a section from from one of the Rishonim, one of the medieval commentators, Rabbeinu Bachai, one of the more kabbalistically inclined of that period of history. And he says a very interesting thing. He says. Kol hatzadikim nikraim gerim. That all of the righteous, all of the righteous, were called gerim. Were called wandering foreigners. The ger milashon gargir. He explains the etymology of that word ger. Right. Typically, people use that word ger to refer to a convert, but but literally speaking, ger means a foreigner. That's what it means. And why does ger mean foreigner? So Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar says that the etymology of that word is milashon gargir. Like a grain of something, something that was separated from its from its source, that it's that it's that it's a part. It, it sees itself as separate from everything else. That there is a certain type of 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 even loneliness there. That 
again, even though we have our circumstances and we have our reality and we have we have our established reality, but vis-a-vis -vis God, we see ourselves as we see ourselves as alone. We see ourselves as just communing with that place of be a certain type of detachment. And as as David HaMelech, the great King David, who was did not live his life as a wandering foreigner. Okay, so he had some rough patches throughout his life, but mostly throughout most of his career, he was a powerful king with a relatively loyal uh, citizenry and fighting all his wars and amassed a tremendous amount of wealth. So he was not living as a as a gear by any stretch of the imagination. But he describes himself in Tehillim, right? When he's speaking to God, he says, Ki ger imach, because with you I am a foreigner, I am a wandering foreigner. Toshav kechol avutai, I dwell like my forefathers. Like my forefathers, Avram Yitzchak and Yaakov, who literally lived as these wandering, sojourning gerim. So vis-a-vis -vis you, I still see myself in that way. And living with that consciousness on the individual level, it gives a person a certain perspective of how, how he is traversing this world with God. He's traversing this world with complete and utter reliance on Hashem. You know, we say this every day in Birkat HaMazon. Perhaps not every day, but we say this very often in Birkat HaMazon. And just to understand like the implications of this, you know, a person can have a, you know, a person can find himself hungry and that's a problem. And how do you address that problem? So you get food. That's how you do it. Doesn't matter how you get the food. Doesn't really matter how you get the food. Food is food. It'll address the hunger issue. <clears throat> but we say in Birkat HaMazon that we want food in a very, very specific way. We say, Do not make us get our sustenance from the hands of flesh and blood. We want our resources to come from your hand, from your open and full, bountiful hand. We're saying something very specific. It's not just enough that our needs are met. We want our needs to be met by you. We want to be with you. We want our we want our engagement with this world. We want our traversing through reality to be an experience of being with you, of 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 receiving from you, and that ultimately is the consciousness of this ger v'toshav anochi imach that I am a I am a sojourner with you. I am I am I am walking with you. I am I'm traversing this place with you. And Mizrat Hashem, to take a lesson from Avram Avinu, from all of our holy forefathers that lived, that embodied this quality of the ger strongly, in the strongest way, and that we can take it through our reality, regardless of whatever our external circumstances are, whether we are established or not, whether we are firm in our dwellings or not, <clears throat> but to maintain the consciousness of the ger v'toshav anuchimach. Shabbat shalom, y'all.